Good evening and welcome to Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition live stream campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running the campaign as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Wilhelm Wolfsbane, the human swashbuckler rogue. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Denitis, playing Rudy Whitaker, the shifter eldritch knight. And Joe O'Gorman, playing Wrath, the Asimar, Pact of the Tome, Warlock of the Great Old One. Thank you for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the very first time, Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday on the Dungeon Dudes YouTube channel where we cover everything Dungeons & Dragons, including advice for players and guides for Dungeon Masters. So check us out there at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. You can also join us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch. Check us out from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube. Of course, don't forget to take a look at the links below for our Teespring store with all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes t-shirts, including some new ones like the Dusk Wardens and our Ducks t-shirt. Yes. Uh of course, you can take a look at them at bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes Merch. With that, let us return to the shadows. Drakenheim is no more. For 15 years, we foolishly believed the madness and mayhem of that crumbling city was confined to the ruins. We were wrong. Insidious horrors have crept out of the shadow of Drakenheim into a world unprepared for such nightmares. Tales of strange magic, swirling haze, and unspeakable terrors echo through the villages and towns surrounding that accursed place. Now, the Dusk Wardens, a new band of heroes, are tasked with driving out the seeping tendrils of the spreading darkness before it takes root. Welcome back to the Shadows of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, they had ventured to the small town of Schaffberg, some several hundred kilometers away from that ill-fated city of Drakenheim. There, they encountered some strangeness, the cold shoulder of the hospitality of the locals, led them to questioning what exactly was going on in this town. It wasn't until they encountered their contact, the mage, Linus, finally, that they decided to explore the ruins of an old tavern. Finding the basement underneath, they encountered strange creatures, violent ones at that, which they handedly dispatched of. But yet, they are no further to figuring out what is so strange and wrong about this town. Linus Rams speaks of them, as if some force is controlling the people of the town, and is told of how he was, his spell-casting foci and spellbooks have been stolen from him by unknown assailants. Finally, an invitation of two strange elves dwelling in a cottage by the lake to meet with our heroes this evening. What will they do next? Let's find out. I'm a little hurt right now. Do you need any help? I mean, do, let, let me just see here. Do we have any spare potions of healing or things of that nature? We, we must make it to the elves this evening. But. Yes, Linus did provide you with others, and you can, of course, take a short rest if you wish. Now, f fighting them creatures didn't give us any more information about what's going on in this town. Ah, but that's where you're wrong, Rudy. It did give us information. There are monsters in this town. Well, that's true, but that doesn't mean that that's what's going on. It doesn't tell us what's going on, but it tells us for certain that there is something going on. There's mystery afoot in Schaffberg, <laughs> and I plan to solve it. All right. I'll <laughs> see you there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can uh, see if these are monsters that are corrupted by the delirium there was something odd about their blood 
Hmm. Did you notice it glowed with that same color? Octarine? Yes. Is that what it's called? I think so. That's what they said. Ah. Ah, octarine. <laughs> yes. Uh, that must be uh, the the giveaway. The, the telltale sign of a delirium-infused creature. Are we still in the basement? Yes. Um, you, I, I suppose you have taken a short rest because you did resummon Bruce. You <laughs> called him back again. <laughs> Bruce! Oh, in that case, I'm going to use a few of my hit <laughs> die during while he's summoning sure. Bruce. Yeah, you're still uh, taking uh, refuge, I suppose, in this dank and dreary uh, cellar of this burned down and ruined tavern. Um. Searching around, aside from the bodies of the creatures that are down here, um, there is not much remaining of value. There are some some crates. There's some splatters of Wilhelm's blood. Um, <laughs> there's some rotted ropes and bits of flint and broken glass and other tools that are kept down here. Um, and the only other signs that you can tell is that the these creatures uh, have tracked a lot of mud down here. And there's a fair amount of liquid and wetness about. Mm-hmm. Um, this is not a dry cellar, although few cellars in this part of the, like in this kind of village, you would expect to be dry, anyways. Mm. Well, are th- are the bodies still there? They are. Um, they are scaly creatures with lizard-like faces. Um, bits of bone spurs and spines coming out their back and prodigious foreclaws and even quite prodigious uh, and lizard-like feet. I, I take out my book and They start are mostly clad in rotting cloths and leathers. Mm. I, I start like drawing a diagram and taking notes. These creatures don't seem to be decomposing the same way the ones in Tierhaven did. If you remember, Tierhaven creatures infused with the delirium Turned into goop. Turned into goo. These are maintaining their form quite well. Hmm. Um, can I examine one of the bodies to find if I find any any like evidence of delirium? Yeah. Um, do you have tools for doing that? What kind of, or would you just like to examine them visually? Can I use my thieves' tools to like open <laughs> wounds and look? Uh, you pro. If you have a healer's kit, you might find some things that you can use for, for that nature. Um, or you would probably, other than that, you would need um, some tools that, that, to do it properly, you would need, you could always use just a bowie knife or, or a dagger. I have a but small you, knife and some... I have an axe. I have a hammer. Yeah. <laughs> Together. <laughs> we combine. <laughs> To let's create perform an a, autopsy. <laughs> let's perform a rudimentary <laughs> autopsy. Okay. You, Basement so you'd autopsy. Like to cut into one of these creatures? Yes. I'll help. What part of its body would you like to cut into? I'm going to cut it down the center. Okay. So you uh, uh, you cut it down the center of its chest. Do you want me to crack his you, ribs? <laughs> yes, I do, Rudy. Um, within are several... Blackened and still organs, and the—you thought they smelled bad on the outside. <laughs> we can climb in for warmth. I don't think that'll be necessary, Raph. We have a hotel room. <laughs> you die Fine. from the stench of staying in there. Yeah, even even as you cut into them and, and split open the rib cage, the internal organs almost spill out as if they were cut kept under pressure. They kind of just. Bah! flow forth uh, in, a, in a string of intestines, lungs, a heart, a stomach, another heart, an extra lung, a something or what. These things are made for uh, physical activity. <laughs> are there any signs of delirium or the octarine color still present on the creature? I mean, it's... W- what you see as its stomach is there. You could perhaps open that up or go into its intestines. Uh, there doesn't appear to be any actual pieces of delirium in here. Hmm. Perhaps it ate some. Uh, Rudy. Yeah? If you, if you may, open, open up the stomach. I take my axe and I <laughs> cut it open 
with precision. Hmm. <laughs> Opening up the stomach, a bunch of bile comes out alongside with several chewed up human fingers, a nose, and an ear. Well, be on the lookout for anybody missing fingers, nose, or ears. It might be a clue. It could be a Mr. Potato Head. Are they, are they missing anyone from the village? Not much in the way of plant matter, though. Mostly meat. And, mm. and, and still no after. delirium. No delirium. This is curious. Mm. And I never, agree. I've never seen creatures like this, have I? The, the fact that they don't disappear like the other ones leads me to believe that they may not be delirium. However, uh, some of the things we've encountered, like Horus, he didn't disappear, even though he was mutated by delirium. That's true. true. It may not be uh, but that Horus simple. But Horus still had a piece of delirium embedded in him. Mm -hmm. I see no signs of that in these creatures, but also I've been hunting in these woods for years, and I've never seen anything like these. Well, oh, yeah. you are not quite in the woods anymore, and you are 200 kilometers away. Ah. You are on the edge of marshland on the very end, uh, several kilometers outside Auchtenwald. So this is a much different climate than the, than that w the woods. Perhaps Flora the nearby and fauna around here are a little bit mm -hmm. different than Batir Haven. Uh, I, I, I figured I would have heard stories of creatures as large and terrifying as this. If they'd been seen, yeah. There are all sorts of stories of creatures large and terrifying. Creatures with reptilian scales and bat-like wings that breathe fire and eat entire villages. And the smaller creatures that serve them and all manner of reptilian mutated and disgusting creatures, both affronts and creations of nature what specifically this creature may be you do not know i've heard tales i didn't think it was real <laughs> fairy tales you know stories to keep children in in the house and that but no one thought it was i didn't think it was real perhaps in our meeting with the elves i mean they they just moved here so they might not know much about the surrounding area, but perhaps... You might know something, though. We still want to go talk to them. Our meeting should be soon. I look at my wrist. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I write things on my wrist from time to time. It says, meet after dark with elves. It's a good note-taking. Thank you. you don't have a pocket watch or something. Uh, I, I, I don't know where it is. It might be in my bag somewhere. <laughs> I'll try to find it, but I like to take note on my wrist. It's an easy place to it's look down and... See, <laughs> it's pretty handy. Uh, uh -huh. Most people use the, the paper. creatures. Though <laughs> definitely are aquatic, they have gills or something along their necks. Huh. It appears that they can breathe both in and out of water, for they are a little ways away from any reasonable water source. Well, there's a lake. Yeah, but I mean, they were out for more than an hour. It looks like. Yeah. They're probably there. Might be more of them in the lake. True. Things just keep getting more and more curious. Is there search. like a... I want to look for like a nest down here. There, That is something that is definitely not down here, is a nest. Like... Why were they coming here? I think this could be just a, a happenstance that they mm -hmm. showed up here. It, this might not be, or more could show up. Yeah, the there's time. signs of their frequent travel. And looking around at some of the crates and barrels and other things that are down here, they might have been waiting down here or here for some time. But are they sleeping here? Are they staying here? No. Hmm. Does, does it look like they were taking anything specific? Or were they bringing things here? They did not bring anything here. Best is they might have been hiding here. Hiding from what? We did kind of uh, stumble in. And murdered them? The they, they didn't seem to like to answer questions. They attacked first. When Bruce entered the basement, they seemed to be hiding in the corners. You know? Whether they heard us or not, who knows? Uh, but I, I agree that the next 
step is to talk to these elves. That seems to be our only lead we before we try to get back Linus's things. We should get going. Yes, the sun has fallen, so we should be on our way to the elves. All right, I start to go up the ladder. Let's okay, let's I go. follow. You head up to the small wood shrouded cottage on the edge of the lake where the two elves dwell. You've only seen one of the two elves, a woman. And as you come up and knock upon the door, the there is an answer before it opens again. It says, are you the ones from earlier? In Elven, I say, yes, we are. Come inside. I open the door and step in. Um, as the door o- opens, the elven woman is very clearly now wearing armor. Mm. She has a very finely wrought suit of chain that she is wearing upon her, and she has her sword in her hand. Um, she is like all elves. M- the elves move with more of a cat-like um, posture and, and bearing, and their features are strange. The elves with their elongated ears and noses and high eyebrows always have a little bit of an unsettling look ab- about them. Um, but knowing Wrath, it's no different. <laughs> Beside her is a... Um, an elven man and he uh they the two of them um he himself has much darker hair more of an auburn red and he has a bow drawn uh and is also wearing very finely wrought chainmail both of them wear their cloaks and they are ready for for fighting his bow is not drawn but he has an arrow in his hand and the bow the, the, an arrow in one hand, his bow in another, as you, as you come inside. I place my hand on the hilt of my sword. You appear to be on guard. Are we to expect combat this evening? You must forgive us, says the woman. We're not sure yet if we can trust you. Fair enough. For the sake of communication, I am aware that you are elves and that you and I could both speak Elven. My two counterparts here do not speak Elven, so to include everybody, you do speak Common, correct? The man replies, Yes, I can speak the Common Tongue. Just so that everybody can be included in conversation. Or more specifically, the Common Tongue of Westamar, because, as a side note, there is no Common in this world. <laughs> <laughs> For the sake of this yeah. evening, do you mind if we partake in the yeah. common tongue of Westamar? Yes. Wonderful. <laughs> now, so. I think, at least our party, to show that you can trust us, we'll put our weapons out. Right? I take my sword out. And is there, are we like, is there like a mm. room that they're bringing us into or anything, I guess? Or? They, the, the cottage itself is uh, only two rooms. They might have a a uh, personal room or bedroom off the, the side of it, but the rest of the cottage is rather quaint in its furnishings. There is a large hearth uh, warming the entire room, which the elves have lit. Um, there is a very low table with several pillows placed around it, and a the kitchen itself is part of this, this room. There are a few um, rather fine-looking wooden chests, including one... Uh, rather large chest that is quite ornate um, and it looks uh, it, it is carved like a chest that is standing that it it's has like these claw foot like a claw foot bathtub but a chest instead mm. uh, and it's quite large in size um, the elves themselves gesture for you to sit and they say please leave your weapons at the door I put um my battle axes at the front. I place my sword and my crossbow by the front door. And I turn to them, I'm like, that sword is precious to me, and so is that crossbow. 
I'm sure it is. I ask Bruce to stay at the door. Our lives are precious to us. As are they to all of us. The woman speaks again, says, You may call me Lorwyn. This is Donal. Lorwyn? Donald? Donal. Donal. I am Wilhelm Wolfsbane. This is Rudy and Raph. Sorry to be clear. She gestured to the man who is Donal. Yeah. We have traveled here from Sky at the behest of an old friend. Is the old friend somebody we might know? Are you from this town? No. Perhaps not, then. May we know the name of the friend? Have you met the Reeve here? Yeah. The constable? No, the Reeve. Zachary Wesselbaum. No, not yet. Many years ago, Zachary's father saved Domnall's life. As is tradition, at the time, the Zachary himself was just being born, and we were named Zachary's godparents. We have been in touch with him over the, over the many long years, and he called us here for some help. Wait. Just to clarify, did you say that Zachary saved Donald's life as a baby? No, Zachary's father did. Thank you. Did he specify what sort of help was being requested? Zachary wrote us only a letter saying that people in this town have been acting strange. But when we arrived... Zachary told us that nothing was wrong and that it was a momentary lapse in reason. He offered us to stay in the cottage for a short time and we have been on, go on our guard since. Though it has been many years since we saw Zachary, he is not the same. Mm. When you say not the same, are you referring to his personality or did he look similar in features? To the young boy you knew. Domnall interrupts. Lorwyn, you've told them much already, and we still don't know if we can trust them. I saw you earlier mm -hmm. entering into the ruins of that inn, of that tavern. Correct. What were you doing down there? Investigating. There was a fire not long ago. Maybe you were present when it happened. And the town seems to be eerily guarding of its true nature. The we reception we got was not the nicest of the towns that we've been to. We arrived here, too, seeking uh, advice from an old friend. When we arrived in town, we were to seek shelter at the, uh, the shovel and found it burnt down. And so the more we investigated, the more people seemed to put up walls and barriers against our questions. You, so far, have been the kindest people we've met in this town. Well, not quite. Well, there is the one inn that's the rather Warp friendly. The Warp Wheel. They were very friendly. True. Want us to stay in such, such manners, you know? We but were speaking with our colleague Linus. Do you know him? I do. We, he has been, he arrived around the same time we did. And we saw him one night go into the goose and goblin. When he left, he left in the company of several of the others of the town, the proprietor and a few other men from about the town they were dragging him 
They weren't dragging him towards his cottage, though. They were taking him along one of the roads. At the time, we were traveling about, and we saw this, and we intervened. And we took him back to his own, own home. The... We weren't sure where they were going to take him. And it seemed quite odd that they would drag a drunken man out of town instead of back to his home. Which way were they dragging him? They were dragging him north. North. Did he have his possessions with him when you intervened? No, he didn't. They were taking him north. As you know, his home is immediately south of the tavern. They were taking him north and I suspect they said that they were going to take him to the flame keeper. Why would you take a drunken man to the priest? Dun dun dun. (sighs) This is very interesting information and extraordinarily helpful. Also quite troubling. Yeah. We have, since then, we have seen on another time people visiting, people being brought to the Flame Keeper in the night. Do you ever see them again? Yes, we do. But they always act differently. Sometimes they don't come back. Once we see them, We've seen them, they are not about town for sometimes weeks. People in the village say that they're going on a trip, but then they leave and come back. Might be the pilgrimage? It sounds more forced than the pilgrimage. The pilgrimage was always, uh, Hmm. from my understanding, a choice. You should not go to that goose and goblin. We've also seen people go, travelers come through and not leave. We already went there. We did not indulge in any of the food, though. It was quite unpleasant. In the morning. Mm -hmm. What I will say, though, is that might be exactly why we should go there. We are worried that whatever has happened to the others has happened to Zachary as well. He is the reeve of this village. And the flame keepers, if they are part of whatever this is, is this not strange? It we know that amongst strange. amongst you humans, there is some disagreement over the nature of your god. But is that all that is? Are people... This sounds more sinister than just a dispute about which god is the correct one. This sounds like people are being taken at night and changed in some manner. Raph, have you ever heard of any magics or These, (laughs) um, magic? These, it wouldn't be uncommon to have some kind of mind-altering or suggestive a uh, way to change those with the weaker minds. Especially coming from someone in a place of magic. I mean, I've heard of them trying to convert those to their way, but this sounds a lot more devious. What reason do you have for being in this town? We, uh... Well, connecting with with our friend, Linus. We were supposed to meet him. He was supposed to give us supplies on our longer journey. And since we stopped in, it's... He's asked us for help to get his belongings back. Hmm. When we investigated the ruins of the old, um, inn... We also discovered some beasts hiding there. We quickly dispatched them, but these are other strange anom- anomalies we've seen in the on our journey here. 
creatures of another world. At first we thought the humans simply did not trust us, that we were the strangers and that we did not understand their ways. But from speaking with you, you were much more glib. We were worried that maybe perhaps you had been sent to, well, get rid of us. Well, I mean, we visited the Flame Keepers ourselves, but n- nothing weird happened to us. So we're just here to figure out the truth of what's going on. Perhaps their operation only takes place in, at night. Hmm. Maybe maybe a good old spy mission to see what they're up to in the dark of night might reveal some truths. You asked us to meet you here. Is this why? Is this to tell us this? Is there... When Zachary wrote us, he implored for us, us for help in figuring out what was wrong in his town. We came thinking we would be able to help, but no one here trusts us. We get a cold shoulder everywhere we go, and Zachary himself says there's no problem. We are experiencing the same problem. We came here because there seem to be strange happenings in these parts. We came here seeking refuge and have noticed strange happenings here as well, different from others Mm. that we've seen, but we're experiencing similar conditions to you, and we need to get to the bottom of this. Domnall says... Something smells in this town. At first I thought it was just the smell of human life, but it's not. What is it the smell of? I can't just, I can't say. It's Is it a bad or good smell? Well, it's vile. Rule number 19 is follow your nose. If there's a bad smell in this town, and you mean quite literally. Quite uh, literally, yes. Have, Have we noticed anything? Well, you smelled some smells. Yeah. <laughs> smelled some smells. Have you uh, seen you if the smell comes stronger from anywhere else in town? Like the church? That's certainly one place. But there is one other, and you know it, don't you? The shovel? The ghost and... The, the goose and goblin? The goose and goblin. Oh, the goose and goblin. Hmm. Something is going on at these places. They are common places where people frequent, too, in this town. We, the two of us, knowing now these these situations, we don't want to cause... We are outsiders here. If we cause trouble, if we, we don't want anything to lead to bloodshed, it could very well be that these people, like Zachary, are being controlled by a force that is not their own. They're innocent. Could be. Then our job is to get to the bottom of what is causing it. I don't intend to put you into harm's way, but I may ask. The three of us plan to investigate this further and possibly put ourselves into harm's way. Hmm. What I might ask of you two is to go about your daily business. Perhaps if you need to leave your cottage, do so. Keep your eyes and ears open for more unusual happenings. Anything that you might overhear, anything that you might see. Hmm. In the coming day or so, we, we don't plan to stay too long, but it seems that this town might need our assistance. I would say if you could just be an extra set of eyes and ears for us, that might be very beneficial to our cause. Certainly, we can do that. You can also find a safe haven here if you require you, we do not know who else you can trust in this town now. Mm. We've paid for rooms at the uh, Warped Wheel. Have you noticed any strange happenings around that inn? It seems to be one of the few businesses that is still operating normally. Which also is curious, is it not? Indeed. But have you noticed that many of the others that have given up much of their other wealth, they've given up their belongings. Strange. Even Zachary, his home, beautiful, but when we went to visit him, 
many of his possessions that he had inherited from his father, the home was threadbare. Could they be giving them some sort of cause? We won't know until we go look around where the flame keepers are. What I'm interested in, if we go to the flame keepers or to the goose and goblin, I say we devise a plan. Rule number one, always have a plan of attack. And if we are going to these places, I say that it would be quite convenient for us to um, perhaps attempt a ruse of sorts to put the people involved at ease while somebody investigates further into places maybe they don't want us to go. If we can get into perhaps the basement or or the back rooms of the church or the cellar of the Goose and Goblin, well, we might uncover something. We know something. that the Goose Goblin had already had some dealings with uh, Lannis. Would they not be suspicious if something were to happen there again? If someone came snooping around knowing that our friend went in there? What if Linus... What? We could send Linus back in. I don't want to put any innocent people in harm's way. That poor old man, you're going to put him in danger again? No. Poison? Drug? What if I became Linus and go searching for my valuables? That's not a half bad idea. I have a, a risky idea. Hmm playing off of your idea. Does anybody here know how to make an antidote if, if somebody were to be poisoned? Because if you're going in as Linus, we might want to lure them to attempt to poison you again. If we can administer some sort of, of antitoxin. But we don't know the nature of the poison. That proves to be a problem. I'm just thinking out loud, but how? what do you plan to do once we get to the Goose and Goblin as Linus, except being poisoned again? <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> Linus wouldn't fall for that again. Make it up as I go. Uh, Bruce can detect poisons, my trusty companion. However, uh, my hope is that you're close by and maybe we go during a more busy evening where we can sort of cause a distraction. They're going to recognize us right away, though. And if, and if, well, Rath, you're not with us, they're going to be asking questions about it. I could uh, make you both invisible. We also have I to think about those men that I saw on the second floor. The strange, they, quiet ones, right? Yes, they were quite... Uh, how do I say? Yeah. The, Strange. Yeah. Uh, almost as if Abnormal. the way that the elves describe them now. So once you infiltrate, once you go in posed as Linus with your companions invisible, what do you hope to do next? Perhaps invisibility. Rudy's, Rudy's a very good bodyguard. If she stays somewhere where she can see you, I might be able to use that invisibility to take a look at some of the places that maybe they don't want me looking. I was going to say, you can put me invisible, but I ain't, I ain't quiet. I ain't. <laughs> I ain't. <laughs> I just took your accent. I'm not relying on you to be quiet. I think if you're invisible, there are many windows. If you stay outside and just keep your eyes on Linus Wrath and me and Wrath go in together but I go unseen, I can slink past the locals and perhaps wait for an opportunity where they come through the door and I slip through and I won't engage with anything. I just want to observe, mm -hmm. listen, find any clues. Makes sense. What do you say, boys? I say this is a Ooh. mighty fine plan. Perfect plan. No what could, holes. What could go wrong? At all. <laughs> you know, 
Rule number three is never underestimate your foes, so I need everybody. Even if we think our plan is solid, this is a dangerous plan. Mm. You will be outside. Wrath will be disguised, and I will be snooping around invisibly. There's a chance for any aspect of this plan to go wrong. If that happens, we need to regroup. And I guess... How do we know if we need to regroup? Well... How do we know if the plan isn't working? If something's going wrong? Do I just... Smash through a window? I mean, I could probably do it in two shakes of my tail. I mean, rule number nine, when in doubt, improvise. And I am great at improvising. So if things go wrong, that's where improvisation comes in. All right. I guess we're going in. I guess we're All going right. to the Goose and Goblin. <laughs> what what time in the evening is it? Uh, it's you met with the elves at sunset, so it's early. It's past sunset, but not at midnight yet. So perfect <laughs> drinking hour. <laughs> yeah, perfect drinking hours. Perfect drinking hour. I would say that even Linus probably needs to go get a light meal. He seems a bit feeble to cook for himself. Should we perchance go s just have one more <laughs> chat with Linus to see if, <laughs> first of all, you need to acquire his, his I don't know, do you need to like his steal his, his yes Linusness? Yes. yes. Um, Is that what you do? Steal the essence of people? Let's not get into the details. <laughs> Please never what steal I would my <laughs> essence. What I would say is that it might be worth um, keeping Linus in the dark about this. Yeah? What if he walks in while you're in there? <laughs> it, it might be important that he actually... What if he... Yeah, if he decides to wander around town and somebody even leaves the tavern, about, sees Linus... How about we write him a letter and I'll send over Houdini with it? Yeah, stay indoors. Yeah, um, stay indoors tonight. Just let him know that... We've got something going on at uh, at the Goose and Goblin not to come around there. Or anywhere. He needs to stay home. All right, anywhere. Mm -hmm. How about you You write the letter and let him know? <laughs> Dear Linus, I plan to take your form to infiltrate an inn. <laughs> All the best. Wrath. <laughs> That's not telling him to stay in. <laughs> P.S. Don't leave your house. <laughs> <laughs> Better. All right. I sent Houdini off with the letter. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> can I practice my Linus? Can you give me my Linus uh, prompt? Um, your Linus prompt is, <laughs> Oh, well, they were all... <laughs> It was them. I was a spellcaster, you know, but I don't have my components. <laughs> oh, oh, there we go. Oh, we're going into the inn and we're going to get. Uh, has anyone seen my staff? <laughs> I nailed it. Wrath. <laughs> Wrath, you are a talent. <laughs> Honest. So I'm going to become <laughs> Linus. Um. <laughs> With the big droopy beard, <laughs> the old frail man, and uh, I'm gonna have Bruce inside my, uh, inside me, inside like my my, <laughs> inside my robes, <laughs> just kind of tucked in. Tell him to scratch it if he uh, sees anything mm -hmm. weird. Sees anything or smells anything off? I, I bid a fond farewell to the elves. Is there anything else that they want to tell us before we I I indulge in this wild plan? Be careful, and if you, um, if you need, if you need, I myself have some magic that I can use to heal you or help you if, if required. It may be necessary. We'll if you are poisoned, you may return to me and I will do what I can. Much obliged, ma'am. Appreciate the support. I also want to let you know that everything you've told us tonight will not leave this room. Likewise. It's very important to me. Rule number 22, when you're entrusted with a secret, you keep it.
Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. We're going to need it. And I call my axe back to my hand okay. before we go. Just be like, <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> okay. So what is your plan of attack? We're going right. to sneak close to the goose and goblin. Okay. We're gonna, like stealthily. I'm, I'm going to try to sneak. We're going to stay. We're, when we're within a decent range, we're gonna. I'm going to turn these two invisible. Okay. And then the clock starts. We have one hour. And then you're going to don your disguise. <laughs> okay. Of... Uh, of uh, Linus. Yeah, that's right. no problem. It, you can, uh, uh, in, in fact, it's only a short walk from the elves' home to there. So doing this, uh, you could even do it at the elves' cabin mm. and head over. That might be the best play. Invisibly, you invisibly, Rudy and Wilhelm follow the disguised wrath through the dusty outskirts and the streets only a few minute walk back to the goose and goblin the lights are on and there is some conversation happening um as you go into the tavern you can see that some uh that immediately wrath you recognize there are five men sitting down having drinks three of which are the ones that you saw upstairs sitting down the three of them are all sitting beside each other they've got a frothy mug of watered down beer in front of them and one of them says weather was all right today takes a drink another says yep <laughs> i'm freaking and out then, man and then a few moments later uh, uh another one says might be rain tomorrow. Takes a swig of his drink. And then it says, yep. <laughs> another one says, how's the wife? And then another goes, she's good. Takes a sip of his beer. <laughs> Some. All of them are talking back and forth to each other like in a very deadpan manner. And this kind of rehearsed conversation, you, you, uh, continues back and around them with one of them saying something and the rest just responding yep some exciting are, conversations have, have we on. entered yet or is this while we're approaching the the tavern you can hear it as you're uh, as you're approaching one of them tells uh a very a joke that is in very poor taste it was a joke that was maybe funny years ago but it isn't anymore <laughs> and the others go Ha! <laughs> like in unison? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. This is weird. All right, I'm going to I'm going to go one of the side windows. I didn't see you. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't know you were beside so me. So that way I can see the whole room and what's going on and keep an eye on you. And Thank you. Are the are the windows um what are, are they glass? The glass panes on them. Um the windows are are shuttered. Uh, and some of them do have glass, yep. Are any of the, the ones open that have glass? Yep. All right. So I'm going to go up to this window, and if you need me, look to the window, and I'll be there. All right? That window? That window? <laughs> and I point to the window that I'm going to be at. <laughs> you're, you're that window? <laughs> yeah. like, you oh, tell yeah. me when I point to the right window. That one. Okay. That one. And uh, and if Thank I you, need to, 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 because you can talk to me telepathically but if i need to get you know in, in uh contact with you i'll blow on the window <laughs> and i'll write whatever i need to okay raf do me a favor when you're going through the door open it wide so i can come in with you burst in there uh i'm gonna like crazy man you're ag- pretending to be agreed <laughs> okay you burst in the doors. Oh, Wilhelm, my. you can make a stealth check. This is, oh, it's quite the night out there. And I'm kind Does of holding the door open. Doesn't give you advantage. Okay. It gives them disadvantage. I got a 14. Okay. The Over their conversation, uh, none of the men seem to notice you, uh, uh, especially over the loudness of uh, <laughs> our, our new guest. Um, 
And one of the, the men speaks up and says, Mr. Rams, I didn't think you'd come back. Well, I've happened to be misplaced my spell book. I can't find my staff or any of my components. You haven't seen it, young man, have you? Uh, no, I have not seen your spell book, says the innkeeper, Mr. Beckerman. Maybe you misplaced it the last time you were here. You got quite drunk last time. Maybe if you have a drink or two again, it will jog your memory. Yes, yes, in just a moment, young man. I think I should just take a look around. You wouldn't mind if an old man took a look around to see if he could find his misplaced possessions now, do you? Not at all. Not at all. I feel so bad that you lost all your things the last time you were here. Why don't you have a drink on the house? Yes, yes, just one moment. Let me just see if it's over here. And I'm going to start walking around into, like, the different tables and checking yep. underneath them. Yeah. Is it over? Oh, ah, jeez, I can't quite find... This is the one of the most frustrating things when you know you have you've remember where it was just moments ago. Well, that's so frustrating. <laughs> Why don't you have a drink and sit down and maybe you can think about where you went? That is so kind of you. If you do not mind, place it on the table and I will get to it in, in just a moment and maybe will help me relax. Okay. He goes behind the bar and pours you a mug and puts it on one of the tables. You wouldn't happen to want anything to eat, would you? Mr. Rams, I can't eat when I'm so anxious. I, I, I'm gonna be in such trouble without those, those items, those books, and my staff. Uh, you're sure you haven't seen an extra staff lying around? It's quite a standout piece of arc, arc of. I saw of you come. I saw you come in with it, but I didn't see you leave with it. Then it must be around here somewhere. Maybe it is. Why don't you keep looking? <laughs> While all this is happening, um, I would like to go to the door, like sneak over to the door behind the bar. Okay. Does And like, I'm kind of waiting to see if anybody comes in or out so that I can slip through the door. Well, there's the bar. Yeah. Um, there's the bar itself, which just has a... You can just walk right behind it. There's nothing yeah. stopping you. And then there's... Uh, two doors. One ostensibly leads to the kitchen. Another perhaps leads to a storeroom. And then out on the main level, there's also a set of stairs that go up to the rooms above. Um, I'm going to try to get into the kitchen. Okay. Um, the, uh, the door to the kitchen is hanging ajar. So it's not closed, but it's not fully open. How, like, how is it not enough for me to squeeze through? You could try. <laughs> uh, as I approach the door and I listen in, is anybody in the kitchen? Yes. You see that there is a um, a rather lithe and muscled man. Uh, he is wearing a... Um, he is wearing just kind of like a a white jerkin that's stained with like food. And then he has these black leather breeches on. Um, and he's got a um, butcher's knife and he's cutting up some meat and pu putting it in, into a stew. Um, and he's, he's covered with like all the refuse of cooking meals and everything. Um, as he's working over the stove and the, and in the kitchen itself. I'm going to attempt to silently slip through the open door. Okay, make a stealth check. 26. You slip in, the door doesn't even move an inch. I start looking at the ingredients being used. You hear a call from outside and you say, Dieter! 
a meal for our guest, Mr. Rams. And the man gets a, a trencher and a bowl and starts putting some of the, the pottage and the, the, bit of, the bits of food I- into it. And you watch as he does so as he l- reaches over to a unmarked bottle and he just pours the bottle this kind of this greenish black liquid into it and stirs it in and then puts the bottle back on the shelf. I am going to wait until he goes to take the food out and I'm going to take that bottle. Okay. Rudy, what are you doing meanwhile? Giving an eye out outside. <laughs> okay. Where's Houdini and all this? <clears throat> He's just on my shoulder. Okay. Uh, I'm going to kind of knock over a bunch of stuff on one of the tables. Okay. Just causing... Uh, just kind of a little bit of a mess. Oh, jeez. I didn't mean to. Oh, I could have sworn I saw my glasses underneath. You spilled your drink. Let me go get you another one. And the and the bartender goes back to the... Uh, um, a uh, woman comes out of the storeroom. Um, uh, she's essentially... Dr- she's dressed as a as a serving maid and she comes out, she starts cleaning things up with a, with a rag and a broom. Um, and the barkeep immediately goes to prepare you another drink. I'm going to go sit at the bar, kind of wander over. How many drinks did I have that night? Well, he says, you had a few beers, but you also had some of our special reserve. And he lifts up a, a decanter. Fancy another shot of it? If I could... He goes to pour it and puts it right in front of you. <laughs> if I could only catch my senses before they leave me, then I could feel more comfortable partaking in the, the drinking. This will perk you right up. I'm going to grab it and give it a sniff. It's like, whoo, whoo. <laughs> that smells boozy. <laughs> I'm going to. Um, it's a thick, dark, amber liquid. I'm gonna feed it to Bruce. <laughs> You're gonna feed it to Bruce <laughs> in my in my coat just to try to. So I get a quick. I get to do one of those like. Beard. <laughs> okay. Yeah, <laughs> through the beard. You see, it's kind of <laughs> okay. Um. Make a deception check to hide, or actually make a slate of hand check to hide that you're doing that. Oh no! <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Fifteen. Okay, so you quickly like stuff it down and and feed it to Bruce, and the cat goes. Wah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, make a constitution saving throw for Bruce. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Bruce! <laughs> what did you think was going to happen? I knew. He knew exactly. Uh, 14. Uh, Bruce is unconscious. <laughs> he, now, he is immune to poison. Oh, he is immune to poison. Uh, okay. Condition immunities and damage. He's immune okay. to poison. <laughs> in, in that case, he's not unconscious. Uh, but Bruce... But he, like, Does Bruce he hate gags. that I gave him? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Um... Have you, have you ever seen like a cat look at you when when it, you feed it something that it thinks it wants and then it realizes it didn't want that thing at all? <laughs> Often. He's he's a tough. Like the cat tries to like lick its own chin. Like it's it's the thing where like the cat tries to lick its own chin. Yeah. <laughs> and I I try to contain uh, Bruce. Oh wow, that does sure hit the spot, Sonny. The. Uh... Now, I got to get back to, do you mind if I check upstairs? Was I, I could have sworn I went upstairs for a moment when I was here that this last time, but my, my memory is a little foggy. Go ahead. And I'm just going to kind of start to make my way up the stairs ever so okay. slowly. As he does this, I, um, I send Houdini up. 
mm-hmm. and I look through his eyes uh, in the upper windows to keep an eye on you. <laughs> sure. And what are you going to do, Wilhelm? Um, so now that I've grabbed that bottle, is there any sort of like entrance to a cellar or anything else unusual? There is. There's stairs leading down to a cellar in here. I'm going to sneak down those stairs. Okay. What do I find? So you head down the cellar stairs. You're going to go upstairs, and you're on the main level. <laughs> yep. Interesting. <laughs> Split the party. But who do you need to back? Who do you need to back? Okay. <laughs> this, is, this is a great idea. <laughs> this is perfect. <laughs> it says D&D 101. Okay. <laughs> so you head up the stairs. You head up the stairs. I take like one step at a time. You know, like I got no cane. Mm-hmm. Um, and you are, you see that there are several rooms on this level. There's the one, uh, um, you recall from when you sent Bruce up here, there's kind of like this common area at the, at the landing of the stairs. There's nobody there right now. There's three rooms that are private rooms. And then there is one common room with bunk beds in it that you recall looking at with, with Bruce. Which one do you want to go to first? Uh, is there anything out in the open? Any All ident? the rooms are closed. Okay. Um, I'm going to stand at the top of the stairs mm-hmm. and just st- start to wait. I'm going to wait there, and I'm going to listen to see if anyone's going to be following me up. Okay. Which way are you going to face? Uh, I'm going to face uh, the stairway. So looking down the so stairs. So I'm going to be looking down the stairs and just kind of waiting there uh, at the top of the stairs. Okay. And I'm going to just take a bit because I want to just listen in on the downstairs and see if the, any of the mm-hmm. general vibe has changed since I've left the room. Uh, in in that moment, you just hear uh, the um, the barkeep say, Hey, Dieter. I, oh, he's gone upstairs. Why don't you bring him his meal up there? He can have a seat. And you see coming up the stairs comes the cook with your plate of food. We will go over to Wilhelm. Wilhelm, you head down the stairs. Down at the base of the stairs is a very large cellar. The cellar itself, it is dark and musty. There are extra tables and chairs, some of which are broken or stacked against the walls. There's a few cobwebs, and there are two doors um, flanking the stairway as you come down. And there are a few. Po- uh, there's one lantern kind of lit hanging uh, opposite on the other side of the room f- from a chain. Okay, but nothing, nothing very strange in this room other than a few tables and chairs. Um, I approach the closest door. Okay, and I listen at it. You hear a squeaking noise. Like the squeaking of a mouse or is the squeaking of like hinges? It's, yeah, it's a squeaking. Oh, there's there's some rats down here. Is I, I try the doorknob. Is it open? Yeah. I kind of I, I kind of like let it open. Like I, I move it a little bit, but I give it just enough that it looks like yeah. it could have opened on its own accord. And I step back. The door uh, s- opens. It's a room filled with casks of beer. I go to the next door and listen. Nothing. I try the doorknob. Looks like a dry goods storage room. Is there anything unusual in this cellar? Beyond the doorways leading in, the furniture stacked up and the single lantern hanging from a chain in the room, nothing. Interesting. I, I spend maybe a minute or two just kind of going around the outside of the room, looking mm-hmm. along the walls for any any anything interesting, like whether that be something like a hidden stash or a secret compartment yeah. or even um, a box or barrel that might look out of place. Searching around as you follow along the wall, you feel a draft on the wall opposite the staircase. 
and you c look through the stone and you can see that there's actually a deep groove in the shape of a doorway. I, I approach it. <laughs> Secret door? In the wall. You find it with your fingers. Yeah. But there's no obvious way to open it. I try to push on it. You push against it, but it doesn't give way. I, is are the walls like brick? Yeah. I I kind of run my hands along the outside of the wall, looking for maybe a brick that pushes in or some sort of secret entrance. I'm trying the classic, you know, hmm. maybe there's a button to push, maybe there's a, a lever to pull. You search around for a few minutes to no avail. Rudy, what are you doing? I'm still watching uh, <laughs> from the top, but you you hear this. <laughs> on the window outside and you just see Houdini like <laughs> staring at me yeah and I take Big like a wing eyes. and I'm like <laughs> the the cook says to you you want to eat I'll bring it up to you if you want <clears throat> oh yes that would be fine uh if you don't mind placing it on one of these tables here I I in my old age I I have trouble uh, holding on to more than one thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Comes up the stairs with the plate. Um, it's on a large platter. He puts it down on the table. And what do you do as he comes up? Say, is there a, a room for... That is uh, one I might have used on that night. I really do not recall my memory. Where he says he he sets the as he goes to set the plate down. He says, "Yeah, the middle room. Why don't you have a look?" Oh, maybe after I have something to eat, and uh, I'm gonna sit down and start to play with my food. Certainly. He puts the plate down. And he steps away. Is he just watching me? Is he eyeing me? says what do you think uh it do you have any maple syrup <laughs> no i soup i really need some maple syrup it is uh common in my my hometown and i do love you wouldn't happen to have any would you no one around these parts has maple syrup that's fancy stuff i need something sugary Something to add a little bit of sweetness to this. I'll see what I've got. Please, it would be... Oh, n not too much trouble, I hope. He turns to leave. <laughs> okay. What do you do? I wait till he starts going down the stairs, and as soon as... And I'm going to go to the... I'm going to go to the middle room. Okay. And, and I want to listen in. Listen at the door. There's not a sound within. I'm going to open it. Okay. You open the middle room. Rudy. As he goes to the middle room, you can see that the cook hasn't gone all the way down the stairs. The cook immediately, from what you, you see, watching from, from Houdini's eyes, the mm -hmm. cook went down the stairs and just ducked. Mm -hmm. And you see that the cook is fumbling something inside his shirt. Can I see what? He's coming up the stairs. I start tapping furiously <laughs> on the window. <laughs> <laughs> okay. With that, Wrath, make a perception check. Twenty-four. Okay. You hear the steps coming up the you hear footsteps coming back up the stairs as you are going into the room. Are you going to go in the room or stop? Uh, I stop and I run back to my Okay. Chair. As you... <laughs> I run back so over. You're, as you turn I, around, I, you see the man at the top of the stairs. Mm -hmm. And as you turn around, he pulls out a crossbow <gasps> and uh, f goes to shoot at you. Roll for initiative. Ah! Oh! Oh, so rude. Are we all rolling for initiative? Yeah. yeah oh, okay. boy. So rude. Is this where the maple syrup is? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> I mean, this makes sense. I, I'm not even aware of what's happening. 
What did you get, Wrath? Uh, 12. Okay. Rudy? 11. And Wilhelm? 8. Okay. <laughs> this is this is not Okay. So Dieter the cook goes first. He lowers his crossbow and he fires it directly at you. <laughs> Rude. Where's my maple syrup, young man? <laughs> <laughs> uh he gets a fourteen to hit. Oh, that hits. Okay. So he didn't surprise you and you are um you are so you're not surprised he doesn't have advantage, but you still take five points of piercing damage and make a constitution saving throw. Uh twenty one. Twenty one. Okay. Um you feel a surge of poison sh- uh shake through your body. Uh, and you take ten points of poison damage, which is the half that you would, half of what you would have taken otherwise. Okay. Wow. Um. When he he shockingly sees that you are still standing, and looks down at his crossbow, looks back up at you, and fingers a wickedly curved blade from behind his belt. I'm it's going, your turn. I'm going to... Oh, and you need to make a concentration check on invisibility. <laughs> <laughs> uh, six. <laughs> <laughs> the invisibility ends on Wilhelm and Rudy. Uh-oh. Sorry. Uh, Rudy, looking through the window, uh, perched through the window, the five men uh, that are in the bar all of a sudden turn, and they see that you're right there. <laughs> I'm still blind and, and deaf, I guess, because I'm looking through Dini's eyes. <laughs> I guess I'll so come back mean. to myself. Okay. So we'll just set up the board a little bit here. Okay. So Rudy, you're you're outside one of the windows. Yeah. There's the bartender. There's his wife. She's in the storeroom. There's the five men. They're right by the table that Rudy's by. <laughs> and Wilhelm is downstairs. And uh, if you re- remove the man with the barrel from the map there. And uh, Wrath is upstairs as well. Uh, and uh, w- <laughs> you're on all three floors. We can't show them all at the same time. <laughs> so we'll just keep the main level and see see where we go. Okay. So, Wrath, it's your turn. What are you going to do? I am going to take a beat. I'm going to hold where the the bolt hit me. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to fall to one knee and just kind of keel over and close my eyes. Okay, make a deception check. Da-da-da-da. Uh, 23. <laughs> okay uh you Such are keeled deception. over on the ground uh rudy <laughs> uh rudy the five men look at you as you be- pop into visibility cool um, <laughs> <laughs> looking in the window i uh dash <laughs> into the bar okay um, and I, knowing that you're in trouble, um, can I make it up the stairs? Uh, that would be all of your movement. Yeah. If you, if you dash with your action and then use your movement, you could get up the stairs. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay. Yeah. You dash up the stairs to see this man. Uh, walking towards uh, the unco- the unconscious-looking body of Wrath, because with his high deception check, 
Uh, Linus. Linus just laying there. Yeah, Linus. Uh, make an insight check real quick. Can I just say it to her? Because now that I see her at the top of the stairs, I'm going to just, in oh, my you mind, I'm just going to go, path. I'm fine. Okay, 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 <laughs> I'm fine. So everything's she, fine. She knows that you're fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm fine. Everything's fine. Okay, I got a 12 uh, and, there. And the, the man, uh, see, the, the cook uh, sees you and is rather shocked. And he's like, what are you doing up here? Um, and as my... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm just uh, like, <laughs> hey. <laughs> Hi. He said, uh, he, the, the, the cook says to you, old man's had too much to drink. Mm, yeah, he probably needs some help home. Yep. Yeah, I should probably, I mean, he probably doesn't need that sword. You're an outsider, aren't or you? Or that crossbow <laughs> when he's feeling so bad. Uh Totally. I'll help him home. You get out of here. I'm accident. <laughs> you, you're going to help him home? I can help him. Don't worry. No, you an outsider. You get out of here if you know what's good for you. Oh, often I do not know what's good for me. Listen, old lady, you ain't meddling in none of our affairs. <gasps> oh, Now you got out lady? and go home. Oh, <laughs> and I start to go like, <laughs> I'm ready to like pounce towards him. <laughs> and that's why. Okay. Um... Actually, I'm gonna action search. Okay. And where is he near the stairs? Um. Well, if we pull up the second level. <laughs> Sorry. All right. What is happening? <laughs> Remember the stairs. Uh, it's the perfect uh, plan. <laughs> so there's the second level. Oh wow. So Raph, I, I was at the middle door and I just yeah. And where's the cook? He was just coming up that up the stairs. Right? No? Oh, you just came up the stairs. I think he... And where is he? Like... Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that looks so cool. So... Great. Adjust the camera a little. <clears throat> yeah, so there there you go. That's what you're looking at there. I would like to flip him down the stairs. You're going to push him down the stairs? I want to flip him backwards down the <laughs> stairs. <laughs> Like, full on, like, grab him and pull him down the stairs? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, you're going to try to shove. It's going to be a shove. Cool. So, we're going to make opposed athletics or acrobatics checks. Oh, athletics for sure. Okay. 20. I get a 23. No! <laughs> oh! So, you go to grab him. Wrestling. And he's like a snake. He slithers out of your grip and pushes you off of him. All right. That's it. Okay. Um, so, uh, as you do that, he says, Hey, boys, we got a little bit of trouble up here with this uh, old lady who don't quite know her place. Don't call me old. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the five men race up the stairs um, and they all move to grab you, Rudy. They can try. So they they basically, they come up the stairs and they start dogpiling you. So I'm going to have them all make, so they're going to try to do to you what you did to them, mm. but it, but there's five of them. All right. So I'm going to give them advantage because they're all working together. Okay. And we're going to make opposed athletics checks. Oof. 20. <laughs> Uh, with all of them working together, I get a 22. Woo. So because there's five of them, I'm going to say that you are restrained okay. by them. So they've all run up and they've grabbed you all together. What? Yeah. I can take them. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, they're, and, and they're starting to, to, to pin you down. Um, we now go to Wilhelm. 
<laughs> Wilhelm knows that he's visible, but he doesn't know everything that just went on. So <laughs> I know that something is is amiss, but in a last frantic attempt, I'm I'm still trying to figure out this door. I look around the, the basement again. There's just tables, chairs. There's a lantern hanging on. Is it on a chain or a yeah, rope? Yeah, it's on a chain. Uh, I go over to the lantern and I pull it. It pulls down, and as it pulls down, the door slide the doorway slides open. Nice. Um, Behind is a small room. In this room, um, there is a table, several de- several benches, and a ladder leading up to a trap door. This would be approximately underneath the. Uh, where this ladder would lead to would be about underneath the storeroom. Um, there are... Um, there is also another wooden door leading out of this room. On the table are is a list of all the families that live in the town with several of the names crossed off and then there is a very rough map of the area with a trail marked into the swamps. I grab all of that. Okay. And I try the, the door that's the, in this room. The door opens into a cavernous passage that descends into the darkness. Based on the way I'm facing, looking at the map, looking at the direction of this passage, what direction... So, actually, I'm just going to ask a specific question here. Yeah. Does it appear like it's heading towards the church? This passage, the passage that you have found itself is heading. Uh, so, the, the, the passage itself is heading towards the west. With my knowledge, Which it would be away from the church. Interesting. Are there any prominent buildings west of here? Like, no. Is that towards the swamp? Yes. But how okay. far this pa- this passage only goes thirty feet before it curves. I take all this information. I close the door, leave the room, pull the chain. I know that that's more than I can do with my turn. I guess, yeah. but. Yeah, I, I basically you want to leave. I want to okay. leave and make it look like I know that okay. I took some stuff, so they'll probably figure it out. As but. you go to leave, you hear some screams from upstairs, and you you hear someone shouting out, "Show this old lady who's boss!" And I I start heading upstairs. Okay, we go to the top of the round with Dieter. Dieter reaches into his shirt, and he pulls out. A very small vial and he walks up to you Rudy and he because the the five other men have you restrained Mm -hmm. he's able to put his hand right on your face and uh, press your mouth open Mm. Um, so he's gonna try to open your mouth and pour this down your throat make a strength check to to keep your mouth shut if saving throw or check a strength uh, just a strength check 23 so he's trying to like pry your jaw open and when he sees that he, he can't get get it out, he just splashes it right into your face. Make a constitution saving throw with advantage. Uh, 23. It is nauseating. It smells like the creatures from before. And there's a little bit of a taste of it on your tongue. Like, it tastes like the smell. You don't succumb to it, but you do take eight points of poison damage. Um, And seeing that you have not succumbed to it, he pulls out his blade Mm. uh, as the other men hold you steady. Wrath, it's your turn. I open my one eye. They're all surrounded, Rudy, yeah. right? I get up, I run, and I jump over, and I'm going to try to grab her leg. Okay. And then I thunderstep. 
<laughs> out the window into the into the field over here. <laughs> I just do the little peek, like the open one eye, and just. You're still the old man, too. <laughs> and I go, "That's a terrible maple syrup delivery system." As I look at my bolt in my chest, and I run and jump, and I grab Rudy, and I thunderstep out of the room. Okay, uh, I have to make dun, Constitution dun, dun, saving throws for each of them. What's the DC? Uh, sixteen. Okay, uh, and roll damage for them. Uh, 19 damage. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, but you've thunderstepped out in and into the field. Yeah. So I'm going to do it about 60 feet okay. in, in, uh, towards like the, you're uh, not sure if any of them were wounded or killed by the thunderstep because you've jumped, you've, you've left like you, you, you've chosen somewhere where you I'm do have line of sight, of but now you, you've left yourself somewhere where you don't quite have the ability to, to, to see there. Uh, anything else you'd like to do with your turn? Uh, I'm going to check out Rudy. You okay, Rudy? I'm all right. I'm all right. I wiped the stuff off my face. That got really out of hand. Thanks for being there. Okay. That stuff smelled like those creatures. They're the ones responsible for all this. With the two of you making that escape, you hear the thunderous boom, uh, Wilhelm. Uh, <laughs> and you see saying, where do they go? Where do they go? What are you going to... As you... Uh, and you can hear the commotion upstairs. Using logic, it <laughs> sounds like they're no longer here, and I know that you're a magical man, so I'm going to take the boom as some sort of concoction of yours. Um, I've made it into the kitchen, right? Yeah, there's a back door leading out. I, I kind of open the back door and look around. Do I see them? You hear them above you arguing. But do I see these two? No. Uh, um, I guess... It's dark. You see, but make a perception check. No, but I mean, but there's still town. yeah, there's still light. They're, they they're not too far. I get an eight. <laughs> um, the down eye my eye. <laughs> over the over the yelling above, you can hear Wrath's voice asking Rudy how she's doing, and I, and that's where you make the connection that they're b- out by the farmhouse. And that is where we're going to take our break. And we are back from our break. We are have finished a short rest. We are well fed. We are caffeinated. We are watered. We are emptied. All that good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to give a shout out to Tabletop Audio. Uh, they provide our ambient music. They were kind enough to uh, curate our uh, intro. Compose, compose an original song. An original for intro. song for our intro. Uh, please check them out. Support them. Uh, they are a free service and it's a great way to elevate your game. Tabletopaudio.com Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes t-shirts, including a few of our new ones like uh, <laughs> Way Bigger Than Ducks. Uh, we also have Clunk Clunk on there and the Dusk Wardens. Of course, all your old favorites like Troll Killer as well. Bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. If you're enjoying the stream and you want to help support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can find out how by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. We also have a phenomenal Discord community, which is exclusive for our patrons. So you can join us on Discord and chat with us about all things D&D, all things Drakenheim, and any nerdy stuff that you want to chat with us about. We have some really fun behind the scenes and our new world building channel Yeah, where people can discuss how many people live in a city of, uh, of that square footage? And Monty, how does your D6 random encounter system actually work? It's very confusing. <laughs> All those answers and more on our Discord chat. Um, with that, let's rec- return to the shadows, where our heroes have ra- ran into the shadows of the night <laughs> from the Goose and Goblin Tavern, where uh, there are screams from within, uh, uh, it definitely sounds like several people are injured. <laughs> <laughs> Quite the boom, too. Uh, and there was a, uh, there's a thunderclap, and the sound has several people are opening their homes, the, do- the doors of their homes, and looking out because it just sounded like a thunderclap ran out in the middle of town. Uh, so there's a general commotion in the streets as a few people are, are asking if everything is, o- is, is okay. 
We should. Rudy, you're okay? I'm fine, but those guys aren't going to be after I take their heads off. Wait, we need to find Wilhelm. Guys! We found him. <laughs> Let's get back in there. I, well, problem solved. What? What? You, what, did what you, happened? Wilhelm, we... Well... I was discovered, and they tried to attack me as Linus. And I... Tried to push him down the stairs, but... You tried to push Linus down the stairs? No, 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 no. The Rudy gentleman. came in and saved me. And then well, he saved me. And what about me? Nobody tried to say... No, nobody? <laughs> You're fine. You're, well, you seem it okay. It is true. I, I did make it out okay. <laughs> you seem very capable. What did you find? I found much. Much. I'm worried at this point that we shouldn't be out in the open. <laughs> I'm worried for Linus. Yes, if Linus they, is in trouble. Were, did they discover that you were not Linus? No. So they think that Linus caused that commotion in the bar. Yeah. And they think that you are or working with, with Linus. They don't know about me. And they then, don't know about Wrath. Mm -hmm. So They don't know, but I, I bet they'll assume that, you know, as my partners, you know, that they... You'd naturally be along. I have some disturbing news. Should we hear it now while we're across from the bar or get out of here first? Maybe we head to Linus's to make sure he is okay and make sure that nobody comes knocking on his door this evening to try to finish what they started in the bar. All right, I guess I'll knock their skulls in at another time. We should also use the elves' aid. They could be quite useful uh, now that we've sort of um, rocked the boat. Should we send a letter to them, like from Houdini? <laughs> uh, yes, and uh, you write it. <laughs> may maybe we should uh, consider, as Rudy said, maybe knocking some heads in. Uh, we might only have tonight as a chance. For tomorrow, they might recuperate and assemble the whole town. So you're saying go in and get him. It might be worth uh, finishing the job. Now we're... What, what job is that? Finding Linus's things and getting to the bottom of this. Yes. I don't think we need to go killing the townsfolk. Like the elves said, we, uh, we don't know if they're working under their own mental capacities. This is true. What did you find, Wilhelm? Uh, I guess we're going to start heading towards... Linus's? Yeah. Okay. We should do it at a <coughs> medium pace. How are you going to get there? Because if you go the most direct way, will take you right past the tavern again. <laughs> <laughs> around, oh, hey. around the tavern. Uh, we should go the indirect way. Yes, the long way around. Okay. I guess. Jog, uh, jog it, and I start jogging. <laughs> In the basement, they had a secret door. A door. I a door. was able to solve the mystery of the door. <laughs> And inside was a tunnel that seemed to go in the direction of the swamp next to this town. Swamp. Not only that, but there was a list of all the names in the family and a map that marked a territory in the swamp. Can I see it? Absolutely. Is it names that we... There are several people named. The... The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, <laughs> the carpenter, the family that runs, the goose and goblin, the blacksmith, what and names? both the flame keepers. What names are crossed out? These are all the ones that are crossed out. I didn't think they would get the candlestick <laughs> maker. He was the bravest of all. <laughs> such a shine. <laughs> He's such a shining light to the community. The local shop shopkeeper. Zachary Wesselbaum. The those that run the other tavern, their names have not been crossed out. That's why they were so friendly. Because they're still normal. The names that are crossed out Instead, are the people who have changed. Their names, along with just the words the elves, have been circled. <gasps> it looks like they're being targeted next. We should well, really send a letter over to them. With this being mainly the only night that we might get to act, it looks like it could be a very, very long night. We need to get working. We secure Linus. We make sure that he is okay. Perhaps, perhaps we bring we him, bring to, bring the him to the elves. Agreed. 
Yes. And ask them to keep him safe and hidden. Mm. We do also have an advantage. If they have not recognized myself or Wilhelm, we might have a chance to go back in this evening. We may, under the guise of looking for Rudy or Linus, but f- that's for later. We should meet up with Linus and then the elves and see where to go next. We'll keep yeah. that one in our back pocket. We also have two approaches to take, I'd say. One, there's still the question about the flame keeper and the church. But the clues found in the basement of that inn might be all we need. As you head back, in order to avoid the tavern, you will need to give the town itself a rather wide berth. This will increase the amount of time it gets. It takes you to get back to, to, to Linus's. Can we move at a fast pace? You certainly can, but that fast pace would prevent you from conversing as you have so far. Maybe we stop conversing and run. Run! Run. Okay. We can hide it at Linus's. I put my running hood on. All right. Each of you can roll me a d6. Oh. Five. Six. One. Okay. Six and one. Okay. <clears throat> As you head up the dirt pathway towards the... towards Linus's cottage, you can hear the cracking of a wooden door being broken and battering down and you can hear yelps and cries out from the, from the street beyond from the lights that you from the few lights that you can see of the cottage you are maybe about 200 feet away you can see that there are a group of people that have surrounded the cottage and you can hear the commotion within how many people About eight. Maybe more. I think we can take them. Are they the ones from the... In the night? Difficult to tell. He needs our help. Now. Let's go. I still think we approach non-lethally. You know what? You two approach. I'm going to stay back. Because they know they're looking for me. (coughs) And for him. But they're not looking for you. I'm going to change back into Wrath. Okay. I usually like to remain hidden, but in this instance, I think they don't know anything. They have no idea that either of us have been up to anything. We you can guys make a plan. I'm going to switch the scene. All right. We can approach as commoners. Just we're, we're local friends just wandering. Yeah, Linus is our friend. Yeah, so what is happening with Linus? We can ask. We can inquire. And meanwhile, Rudy can do what I usually do and try to sneak and... Well, I probably won't sneak. I'll probably just wait. See what's what. Very well. Or... Wrath, do you, do you want me to come with you? Well, I guess I, I have one more plan. What is it? I could, depending on the party that's present, I could... Uh, kind of mingle in as one of their the others and try to get Linus out I like it for example um, depending on the party it could I could disguise myself as the constable or I, I could all, like, the we, flame keeper we could look at the names on the list that are crossed off that we know that you could transform into and once we kind of get a readout of who's there. Uh, I can do the blacksmith, his assistant, the constable. Um, was the constable on the, the list? The flame keeper. The constable was on the list. Yes. Oh. Um, I could create a distraction. <laughs> <laughs> this is our move. All right, we don't have much time to act, so this this is it. You wait, 
to run out if things go sideways. Wrath, you just let me know when you want me to jump in, all right? Well, it, it, if we're agreed, this could go also terribly. Um, however, I am uh, wondering if we could maybe convince, or maybe we should send, uh, maybe Wilhelm, you should go first and get a read on the situation. Do you okay. want me to sneak behind the house, the other side? Be that ready? Sounds like a I'm going to plan. try to be loud enough that you can hear me and try to get an idea of who you might be able to change into. Okay. <laughs> Do one of those. Oh, you're here, <laughs> the blacksmith. <laughs> <laughs> Who's missing? The constable. I have a plan. <laughs> Going, it's going to be Is tough. Is it much more subtle than that? Hopefully. <laughs> I I will tell you I'm not much of a liar. Oh. Okay, you guys think you got a plan? I think so. I think so. It's, we have <laughs> if it's anything like our last one. <laughs> perfect. I will use <laughs> it's, it's who do you need to look through his eyes? <laughs> As you uh, and as you approach, one last time, I, I go, "Good luck, Wilhelm." I'm gonna cast guidance on you. Well, thank you. <laughs> Hopefully, that will help. Oh, mama! Let's see how this goes. So many trees. Yeah. So I actually I can go in as Bruce. I'll do the same eye thing. We'll, we'll hide behind trees and just... <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you guys can approach from whichever direction you wish. We're approaching from back here. They're going to stay hidden, and I'm going to walk out. <clears throat> okay, so you're approaching from behind the road. Um, so you creep all the way around. Um, I will have you all make a group stealth check as you do so. 18. 15. Okay. Nine. Okay. Working together, the group of you are able to circle the perimeter, and here's what you see. You see um, Linus's cottage, a rough, only two-story stone building, which with a roughly shingled roof, is out here in the midst of the woods, and there are five people around the fence yard outside the front, um, and the door has been barged down, and there is a commotion from within. There is, of those five people that are outside, three of them. Have repositioned themselves to cover the windows mm. to the building and are patrolling around as there as the commotion within continues. What will you do? I walk out from the trees and start approaching the house casually. OK, you are seen immediately. Um, and it's one of the, um, you see the group of people ar around. It appears that three of them, that two of them are, sorry, there's three, three of them total. Of the five that are outside, two of them are the blacksmith's sons from earlier. One of them, you don't recognize him, but then the other two are two of the constable's men. As I approach, I go, I heard some commotion over this way. What seems to be the problem? Is Linus okay? One of the constable's men uh, turns back, or, uh, turns as you approach and says, um, mind your business. The old man caused a problem down at the, the Goose and Goblin. We're arresting him. Oh, the constable's here. Yes, he is. This is our business. The old man murdered two people. Murdered? Oh. Yes. Well, the Linus 
Linus he used a, a spell, blew their bones to smithereens. Three others were hurt. Four others were hurt. So the constable's here. I see. What's the blacksmith doing here? These two, the, these two are part of the militia. They're helping us out. And the blacksmith's here as well. Blacksmith not here right now. The constable and, and the rest of our guard and our militia are here. We're just arresting him. It's none of your business from here. You just move right along, outsider. I mean, I was, I was going to be staying here with Linus to take care of him. He's a very old man. Well, you better find somewhere else to stay. Any suggestions? There's some free rooms at the Goose and Goblin. <laughs> they would push that. <laughs> the worst. Please. Um, you just mind your own business right now, outsider. All right. I walk back to the tree lines <laughs> and, like, I, d- I, <laughs> I <laughs> wrath. I get it in your head. In oh, your head. As, okay, yeah. Uh, I want to. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jeez. Uh, maybe I can get rid of a few of them. And I'm going to come out of the tree line as the blacksmith. Don't forget to be angry. <laughs> oh, there's the blacksmith now. <laughs> With Wilhelm or alone? Alone. Oh, never mind. I'm gone. <clears throat> <clears throat> what are you two kids doing here out so late? You don't need to be out here. You need to be at home. I won't tell you again. I don't care if the constable's been asking you to be in the militia. Um, the two, the blacksmith's two sons look at each other and they apologize profusely to the, they apologize to the, they turn to the militiaman and they're like, sorry, he's been having rages again. And they go to grab you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, you touch me. I, I'm your, I'm your father. You get home right now. Make a act. Acrobatics or athletics check. Ooh. They love grabbing. They love touching. Uh, 11. Uh, they get a 12. <laughs> so they win. So they, they grab you and they're, and they're like, they, they, they turn and they say, he's been having anger ever since he saw the outsiders. Skinny. And the other two, uh, the two militiamen say, take him back to your home. Tie him up. We'll bring him back. <laughs> You get your hands up. I'm I'm so tired of... Shut up, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to kind of go with them a little bit for a moment. Okay. But they, I'm going to uh, make a lot of fuss. Okay. You make a lot of fuss. Um, the one of them, as they're touching you, they're like... They, one of them puts his hand on your face. No, and, and that's like my weird face. And feels that like, a beard isn't there and is like... <laughs> And he looks up at you and is like, what's the matter? You you feel thin. And he puts his hand... I'm just his, sick! And I, I'm going to try to push him off me. Um, Get off. Get off his dad. You're not my father. I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> I Who are am you? your father. What is this? This is some trick? Roll for initiative. <laughs> uh, look, I'm... <laughs> Oops. Oh, there you go. <laughs> did, it, did it work? <laughs> no, none of this worked. Where are you? You're very good. Yeah, and I guess... I'm up here somewhere. I'm closer to the... I mean, you're... No, I was talking to the ones, the constable's at kids the the at the back of the house. I was yelling at them to. Uh, is there is there another get... kid? He's this guy. Is one of these guys? (laughs) (laughs) 
Okay. What do you got? Uh, 19. 22. 12. Okay. With that, uh, Wilhelm, you are the first one to act. So I see this guy at the back of the house alone yeah. currently. Yeah. I'm going to go and try to subdue him non-lethally by stabbing him. Okay. <laughs> I. But he's, like he's not aware of your presence, so you do have advantage. There you go. So I run up behind him in the night, in the okay. dark. And Unable to see. <laughs> and I take my blade oh, and no. I'm going to try to like cover his mouth and like stab him through the shoulder. Okay. Uh, that is a 26 to hit. That is a hit. Yeah. And that will be a plus sneak attack. Uh, 18 damage. You stab into him, and he crumples in un- under the blow, but he's still standing. Um, well, I need to finish this off. <laughs> I can't just let him start screaming. You need screaming. to finish subduing him. <laughs> I, I, I then pull my crossbow out and shoot him in the other shoulder. It's all He responds to the blow as if... Something in his brain is stopping him from feeling pain. Uh oh. Um, I shoot him in the other shoulder. Again, trying to go for a non lethal takedown. Uh, getting a 17. It's a hit. Getting, doing another six damage. He's still standing. I look over and make eye contact <laughs> with Rudy, and I go, Rudy. I need help. <laughs> Rudy, it's your turn. Um, I bound towards him. Okay. Wolf in the night. And um, I'm just going to move us out so that the camera... I come cool. towards his face, that and thing. I actually start... I'm like, I'm like non-lethal, right? <laughs> All right. And I end up hitting him with like the butt of my... Like, I want to knock him out. Okay. Go um, for it. And then Houdini is there pulling on his hair to, to help me. <laughs> get it get in the right position. Um, do I use my hand axe for that? Yeah. Even though it's a butt? Okay. Yep. Uh, 20. It's a hit. All right. All right. Let's knock this, knock this guy out. Uh, eight damage. He f- crumples to the ground with a concussion on his head. As he crumples, you can see that the window he was in front of, the curtain has been drawn across it. <laughs> but you can hear... Um, you hear, Oh, I knew it. I knew you'd come for me. Oh, thwack. <laughs> oh, so they know we're here. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, and it's just the curtain. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I go up to the window and I don't think they know we're here. Do they? I think he was talking to them. They do now. Oh. As Rudy swipes the curtain open, <laughs> she, you can see that the cook from the tavern and the constable the constable is holding the co- the holding um, and the constable and one of the other militiamen are holding Linus Linus as the cook pours poison down his throat Ugh. yeah I'm stopping that um, and and Linus convulses and collapses on the ground. Oh. Looks like he might be breathing, but he's unconscious. So is this guy. Yeah, How much movement was that? You've definitely used all your movement. Okay. Yeah. So I take a throwing axe and I throw it at the cook. Cool. The cook himself, um, though he is um, unquestionably still the cook, he has donned a leather jerkin. Mm. Mean the first head, <laughs> as as always. Uh, uh, Twenty two. That is a hit. Uh, 
six damage. Okay. I take my other throwing axe. Throw it. 19. That's also a hit. Five damage. Okay. And did he take damage from the... He is... Was he he he, in the... He is wounded from before, yes. You can tell he is. From the thunder? thunder. Yeah. Bring the thunder. Okay. We go to the top of the round with the militia. Oh, I go at 12. When does that go? Or, sorry, not the top of the round. Sorry. Not the top of the round. The two boys below the club. Oh, no. This guy runs back around here. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you gotta help him. I'm gonna go help Wrath. You take care of this. I got these guys here. We gotta help uh, Linus, and I guess we're doing it non-lethally. <laughs> we That's don't a- know if they're working under their own mental capacities or if they're mind-controlled. Listen. We can't go murdering everybody in a town until we know that. Says you. Rudy, okay. you're a sheriff. <laughs> Protect the people. I am. I'm protecting our friend. So, the other militiaman. So one of the militiamen in the in the building um, says he says we've got some company outside as well, and the th- the two blacksmith boys they take out their clubs, and the militiaman takes out his mace, and they just <laughs> the, the three of them. Oh, <laughs> not your dad. <laughs> do they? <laughs> they're like How do you're they not feel my I- dad. <laughs> Oh, son, why would you hit me with a club? <laughs> You're not my dad. You never were. I just wanted to love you. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna. <laughs> Your mom's gonna hear about this. Uh, yeah, they start beating you with their clubs. Uh, they get pack tactics. Oh, what? So they have advantage <laughs> on their attacks. Uh, so I get a uh, 14 from the first two attacks. Is the lowest from the first two attacks. And then I get a 13. Uh, a nine. Does 13 hit you? Uh, 13 hits me. Okay, so... Yeah, I might see Four attacks hit. Oh, God. <laughs> they make six attacks, and the, the three of them each just get two attacks. They are surrounding you. They're beating you. They're kicking you. You're on the ground. Oh. It's like grade school all over oh. again. So four attacks hit for a grand total of... Uh, 23 points of damage. Oh! <laughs> Since you are beaten oh. by their clubs. Oh, I'm hurting. <laughs> Uh, Rudy, uh, one of the other militiamen, he comes up and starts bashing you with his mace. Uh, he gets a, uh, he doesn't have advantage on his attack, so he only gets a 11 and a 23 to hit. One of them hits. He gets a, a seven points of damage as it smashes you in the shoulder. The other one comes to the front, front, uh, and fires his crossbow out, uh, getting a 23 to hit Wilhelm. Uh, yes. For eight points of damage. I'm going to uncanny dodge that. Cool. Uh, the constable, he goes next. Um, and he is going to go out the front door. And he sees... <laughs> the, uh, the constable is the one with the red cloak. Uh, and the other guy in the brown is Linus, and he's unconscious on the ground. No, that that's the other one. Yep, there you go. The constable comes out and he sees <laughs> they're beating their dad <laughs> with the mace. He's like, "What's going on here? He's not our dad. <laughs> he's an imposter. Um, he's a fake. It's trickery afoot." Um, and so he leaps over the fence and comes back around uh, towards Wilhelm and Rudy. Uh, and the cook. He comes up to the window as well, and he takes out his crossbow, and he he's going to fire it. He's like, hey there, old lady, and he fires his crossbow at you. Uh, he gets a 17 to hit. I'm going to use shield. Okay. Okay, that's them. So we go to the top. Uh, so we go to the bottom of the round with Wrath. He's getting <laughs> beaten. Oh, <up>. no. <laughs> 
I have Get out of there. I have five hit points. Uh, I'm surrounded. Wrath is going to reach into his soul. And uh, I'm going to use my special ability, Radiant Consumption. Mm-hmm. And for... I, I'm, I start to transform. And as I'm getting beaten to a bloody pulp with these maces and... <laughs> Um, I turn back into Wrath, and then my eyes glow, and they shoot out bright light in all directions. Um, I unleash divine energy uh, from my eyes and mouth, and so I, it first it sheds uh, bright light in a ten foot radius. Okay, can I use that as an escape? So I like it's gonna it's basically like a like a I almost like a. Fl- I almost think of it like a flashbang. If you and I want to use, use that- it in that way, given the circumstances, I will allow it, given the circumstances. But it will cost your action. Yeah, and so it does that, and okay, then I'll I give them a. Con- I will give them each. What's your spell saving throw DC? Uh, uh, sixteen. Okay, they all fail, and they are blinded for one round. And then I book it. <laughs> start Dash. running and I, uh, <laughs> and I which I, direction I kind of crawl away and I'm going to run a, run around and I'm I, oh no. they all take radiant damage don't they yeah like it's like only three, three. <laughs> okay well every little bit counts um uh, I, I'm going to book it the other way okay and then uh after I the initial bang though I'm going to use my bonus action to turn it off because uh, I'm going to say that because of the way you use it, it was your bonus action to activate and your action to do the blind thing. So okay. you've used your action and bonus action. Yeah. Okay. So is it still on? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to just giant beacon of light running around, and I take three damage. Okay. You take three damage? <laughs> yeah, it hurts everything. Oh, no. <laughs> but it's super... It's like you can definitely see me. Yes. You can see me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Top of the round with Wilhelm. Uh, I turn the corner as the constable's running towards me, and I pull out my blade, and I assume the proper stance for fencing, and I say, Constable, on guard, sir, and then I lunge towards him. And we'll see how this goes. Twenty-four to hit. That is a hit. Nice. And I'm going to use my sneak attack. Yeah. Doing thirteen damage. Okay. Nice. I then. You skewer. You you get a good solid cut in on his cheek. Swipe. And then I take two steps back, uh, spin around, pulling my crossbow out, and fire a shot. Okay. Twenty-three. That is a hit. Doing another seven damage. Uh, awesome. Nice. And then I assume... The defensive fencing position. Great. Uh, cool. So, with that, with all that, uh, he grits his teeth and he says, I knew you were trouble when you walked into town. I knew you were trouble when you walked in. <laughs> okay. Um, so, next up is Rudy. Can I reach this guy through the window with an axe? If you, uh, well, there's the other. There's one guy. Which guy do you want to reach? Uh, the guy with the yellow. Uh, he is right up there, but both of them are right up, right up there. So like, it would be really hard if if you try to go through the window. Mm. They both. I give them both an opportunity attack against you. Mm. But if you want uh, to throw something at somebody, you certainly could. No. Okay. Um, the guy right beside me. I'm going to start. I'm gonna hit him with. One attack in my offhand. Okay. And then can I grapple as my second attack? Yes. Cool. I'm going to do that. All right. 
Houdini! Well, it's a good thing I did that. Um, <laughs> crit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> a crit and a one. Yeah. All right. Yay. Missy done. Okay. Um, <laughs> 20 damage to the guy beside me. Oh. The axe <laughs> cleaves into the, the uh, into his collarbone and a spurt of blood <laughs> fires out. <laughs> Uh, and he's he looks in shock at the wound, but he's still standing. Mm. Well, I guess the uh, I guess all bets are off on the uh... <laughs> offhand. Uh, twenty one. It's a hit. Yeah, sorry, Wilhelm. That's oh. fine. Uh, six damage. Cool. You cut him in the side, but he is still up. You know what? I'm just gonna take my last attack. Okay. <laughs> I'm going for it. Going for it. Yep. <laughs> um, that's a hit. <laughs> Ten damage. So you you bring your axe back up from the savage wound and cleave down on it, on him, splitting open the front of his body, and he collapses to the ground. Oh, oh. Nice, Rudy. Ah. <laughs> okay. I was going to use him as a human shield, but he was essentially All done. Right. The three militiamen are blinded. Uh, and so they stumble about, uh, and I'm just going to have them move. They, they somewhat kind of move randomly as they try to find the sounds of where did he go. <laughs> it was so scary. And you're still... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just this beacon of light. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Climbs out the window and he smashes into Rudy's face. Try. Getting a 19 and a 7 to hit. Um, shield. <laughs> okay. The constable rushes up towards uh, Wilhelm and he says, on guard or whatever, taking out his <laughs> long sword and his short sword. Uh, and he attacks Wilhelm three times. Getting a 12 to hit. I parry. A 17 to hit. I take it. And a 23 to hit. That one hurts the most. <laughs> he hits you with his long sword and his short sword, Ooh. dealing a total of 19 points of damage. Oh. Uh, if I uncanny dodge the greater of the two attacks. Uh, the more damaging one was 10 damage. So then it goes to, you f take five less. All right. So 14. That's not so bad. It's more and, manageable. Ah, I, I take the blow and I go, ah, I see your technique is quite excellent, commander or captain or what was he? I don't need no <laughs> fancy schooling. Uh, and then finally, the cook fires his crossbow at Rudy through the window, uh, getting a 14 to hit. Nope. Okay. I move smoothly. Wrath, you're up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um... I uh, use my bonus action to turn off the glowing. Yep. Um, I'm going to chug a greater healing potion. Okay. And, um, or part of, uh, yeah, greater healing potion. And um, I'm going to hopefully be less conspicuous Do as I move? continue to run around the corner to meet up with uh, Rudy and... Um, and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to send Bruce running and Bruce runs and uh, jumps in the constable's face. Okay, nice. Uh, with that, we go to Wilhelm. I'm usually not one to take advantage of an unfair circumstance in a duel, but <laughs> seeing as you're using two swords um, and I lunge towards him. And I guess, yeah, I got advantage. Yep. Nice. Nice. A 19. 19. That is a hit. Woo. All right. Driving my blade, hopefully, into his throat. As, as Bruce scratches at his heels, <laughs> you drive the blade even closer to his throat. Six. 
16 more damage. Nice. That leaves him bloodied. Um, and again, I take my two steps back and fire my crossbow. Okay. And you're disengaging with your cunning... Uh, or do you have the mobile feet? Uh, no, I have... Uh, oh, fancy footwork. Fancy it's, footwork. Yes, right. Right. For the ignorant DMs out there that do not know. I didn't know that. That was really cool. Uh, I get an 11 to hit. That is a miss. Yes. It bounces off his uh, armor. And I pocket the crossbow and pull out my blade again. Okay. Rudy, you're up. I just start wailing into this guy in front of me. Encouraging. Do you want to use your lucky point? I keep forgetting about Lucky. Yes, I would to? love that to. That would have made a lot of go, differences go, go. in several occasions. <laughs> yes. I use a luck point because my aim is true and I get <laughs> 22 to hit. That's we'll it. take it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, seven more damage. Let it not be known that I am not a generous dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> he is a kind Jim. <laughs> Lucky's one of those things that I take and then just like oh, I need I need like a post-it note on my other eye. <laughs> on the inside, it just says use lucky. Use lucky. Use lucky all the Wait, time. Wait, do you have a cheat sheet in your eye? <laughs> yes. In your iPad? Boo. Uh, Boo. Boo. <laughs> all right, so I fire true and the bolt uh, goes right in between two parts of his armor. Nice. Now it is Rudy's turn. Who's this guy in front of me again? Is it? He climbed out the window to beat you. Is it you the up. chef? Uh, no, the chef is in the building still. He's mm. shooting his crossbow. All right, I'm beating up this big guy. Who didn't get in there? Ooh. Uh, twenty-four. Yeah. Uh, so another guy clambers out the window, on top of the unconscious body of his one guy <laughs> and the, the bleeding body of the other, and he's going for it, but he's going to take it in the face. Nine damage. For nine points. Uh, 18 hit. Also a hit. Mm, seven damage. Third. Ooh. 15. A hit. Ooh. Nice. These guys don't have a lot of armor. Mm, five damage. That leaves him bloodied. But he's... But, um... So he clambers through the window and you just lay into him with both of your axes. Um, he's... The, as militia, they're basically wearing a gambeson mm -hmm. for armor, so there's not a lot to protect him, and he cries out in pain as you uh, cut into his body. Uh, but it's this kind of like muted, like, ow. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, I'm just standing over him looking at this, like, I'm ready to take him out, and I've got blood splurted all over my face. <laughs> cool. <gasps> the remainder of the militia assemble themselves out of their blinded stupor, um, they rush around towards the sounds of the fight. Uh oh. He's over here. We are having a duel, sir. This is this is unfair. <laughs> Okay, Wilhelm, uh, the, the one guy dashes right up to you, so they've all, they've all dashed. So one of the militiamen is going to attack Do you wanna... Rudy, yeah. getting a critical hit. Ooh. Oh no, Rudy! And he deals a total of 10 points of damage, but he misses with his other attack. The cook... Then fires his crossbow at Rudy, getting a 17 to hit. Shield! <laughs> wow. Burning through that magic. <laughs> I just I, I just can't keep getting she it on the one side and be like, Here, Reaching shield, up, blocking shield. it. Blocking it. Yeah. Nice. Um, and the constable... I want to be poisoned. Um, um, he, uh, he takes his long swords, his long sword and short sword, and attacks Wilhelm. Uh, not doing too hot, though. Uh, I get a 13, a 10, and a 19. Uh, the 19 hits. I parry out of the way of the other two attacks. Uh, that one is only going to be seven points of damage. So he, he does find purchase, 
uh, as you get surrounded, but only with one attack. Uh, I'm going to use Uncanny Dodge. <laughs> so it as it goes, like it looks like it's about to hit me much harder, and I dodge, and it just grazes yep. my arm. Okay. Yeah, they, they're feeling good about this. Only two of them are down, so there's still one, two, three. Oh, yeah, they're like, we've got you. We've got, they've got you at number two to one. They're feeling pretty okay about this. Okay. Uh, Wrath, you're up. And they're right on top of me? Yeah. Oh, great. Perfect. So I'm going to, in, in, in a kind of a desperation, try to just throw some Eldritch Blasts at them um, while they're right in my face. And Bruce is going to continue to... Uh, jump in the constable's head. Okay. Uh, so I roll with disadvantage? Yeah. First Eldritch Blast on one of the Blacksmith boys. Uh, 15. That's still a hit. Oh. For 14 damage. He dies. <laughs> <laughs> you put your hand up to him and just blow out his chest. Oh, Gavin. Oh, and I go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> And I, and, Daddy, no! And I say in his dad's way, I'm sorry, son. And uh, I get a 15 to hit again. <laughs> oh. And I get a <laughs> 13 damage. <laughs> so I just I just go, and I just explode Look both Look what of they them. did to my boys. <laughs> my boys! Oh, no. I wasn't able to subdue them. <laughs> Raph, they were children! They exploded on their own accord. <laughs> it's just how things happen. Right, Bruce? They just needed some rat guidance, not an elder flash in the face. <laughs> so sorry. I don't know my own power. Uh, and <laughs> this is me as I'm hacking people down. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we're we just don't have it in us. Uh and then I'm gonna um I'm, I'm just gonna stand there and, and just kinda look, look at, at my hands. <laughs> what have I done? And uh, yeah, Bruce is uh, flying in uh, the constable's face. Uh, sh you should have just went home, boys. You should have just went home. Um, I, I pull out my blade and I do a jumping attack towards the constable, driving my blade into him. Yep, you have advantage because of Bruce. Right. Bruce can help you. Yeah. Yeah. 23. That's a hit. All right. So. He's still gnawing on the leg. Um, <laughs> and thanks right to the now. advantage, I can still get hurt. my sneak attack. Cat scratch fever is awful, too. Mm. Cats are mean. Cats are mean. But I love them. <laughs> I have so many scratches. I do. So I jump into the air and plunge my blade into him, doing 20 damage. Uh, yeah, you plunge your <laughs> blade right through his jugular. Yeah. Oh, and no. And I, I, like, land. Like, he goes down, and I, like, land on top of his body and pull the blade out. And there's a fountain of blood that fires upwards as you pull the blade out of his jugular, and you hear him choking on his own blood as he dies. And I turn to the other man and pull out my crossbow. And I go, sir, you have no chance. <laughs> and then I fire the crossbow at him. Okay. Twenty-three. That's a hit. Uh, doing seven damage. Remove the constable. Oh. And then the other guy's still alive, though. I I back, I back towards, um, Wrath, so that we're all kind of together again. <laughs> and we're Rudy. Family. All right, I'm gonna take my two attacks with Houdini right in the front. Uh, 23 to hit. Uh, 8 damage for the guy in front of me. 20 to hit. Or 7. What happens to him? Oh, his head falls right oh. off. <laughs> and then <laughs> <Why is it>? <laughs> <laughs> all you see is me take a big breath. And I second, uh, I, uh, second wind. <laughs> yep, and I heal up. Like I'm rejuvenated by his death. 
Uh, <laughs> the other two run. They uh, both run and dash into the woods back towards town, screaming at the top of their lungs. Yeah, you run! They start we, scry- crying out, imps. murder, 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 murder! As they head back into the Should town. we chase them? We're, so uh, we I'm going to dash after them. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> well, we... It, we I'm easily swayed. <laughs> Come, Wilhelm. We have to stop them. We don't have to kill them. We can nod lethally. We just lethally. need to get them. They can't alert the rest of the town. They're already do. They're in town. <laughs> we are in town and they're yelling. They're, they're, this is a little bit secluded from town, so you got okay. a chance. All right, let's get them. All right. Wait, the cook's still in there. No, the, no, co- they're, the, they're, the they're cook. Oh, the cook, the cook and the other militiamen are running. Let's okay, get them. If, uh, if I do my 30 feet of movement, can I take a shot with, with my Eldritch Blast? Blast? Yes, you can. Do you want to shoot the cook or the militiaman? Uh, mil- oh, man. The cook. Okay. He's already injured. <laughs> uh, a 15. That's a hit. Uh, for eight damage. He's still standing. Just trying to snipe it. Uh, oh, that's only a... Th- 13 to hit. Not enough. Okay, so it goes a <laughs> blast of energy goes flying past he him. He stumbles. He's wounded, but he's still running. Wilhelm? I run up beside Wrath and pull out my crossbow and try to line up the shot. Um, On the cook or the militiaman? The cook. Okay. Twenty-three. It's a hit. I don't get any sort of sneak attack, though. Mm. No. Oh, well, he's kind of running for his life. So you're shooting a man in the back. Are you going to allow yeah. sneak attack? <laughs> I line it up, uh, and I shoot him in the back of the head. You <laughs> subdue him. Is it more than ten points of damage? Yes. You shoot him in the back of the head. I then line up the shot again and try to fire it at the last militia man. Okay. Uh, I hit. We're committed. We're super committed. Doing f- uh, nine damage. He drops as well. I twirl my crossbow <laughs> and holster it. Now nah shooting. Thank you. The eye comes in handy once in a while. That is not how I wanted this to go down. Me neither. Uh, we should move the bodies into the house and check on Linus. Let's we need check to, on him. We, yes, move the bodies into the house, get Linus to the elves. Yeah. And I think we aren't welcome in town anymore. I think it's time to investigate the swamp once I we mean, secure Linus. I mean, the town doesn't know what happened. <laughs> They're going to notice by the... I mean, we still have tonight. By morning, people will notice that these people are missing. Gone, but not our fault, per se. It's One of them is actually still alive. Where? You knocked them oh, yeah, out. The <laughs> hey, 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 we got to lead. We got to lead. Uh, what should we do with the one that I tried to Time not up. kill? Time uh, up, lethal. The only one. Yes, remember uh, when we weren't being lethal for five seconds? We should tie him up and Put him in the uh, barn. stuff him in the Linus's house. If we uh, are able to gather some information. Maybe we can prevent this disease from spreading further <laughs> beyond those that are already given we, their life for it. Do we bring him to the elves as well? No. What if he escapes? I Actually, I do agree. We should bring him to the elves. I mean, we could make him think that he did it, that he blacked out, and put him with like a weapon. But if he was mind-altered like the rest of them, he might not even... That's true. No. I also worry that we haven't found the perpetrator, the source of... Source of what's going on. Or who's running the show here. Hmm. I think those answers lie in the swamp. And let's bring him to the elves and keep him tied up there. Maybe we can move the bodies somewhere. I also have many stab wounds right <laughs> now and could use that healing that the hell elves had offered it my, uh, i have welts all over my body <laughs> <laughs> i was horribly beaten in you the front yard right. <laughs> everything hurts <laughs> turns out the constable was uh quite a duelist although he didn't play very fair there was no honor in his dueling methods hmm. he had friends help although i guess i had a cat help thanks bruce <laughs> 
<laughs> so you're going to gather up Linus. He's unconscious. I put him over my shoulder. First, we move all the dead bodies into the house. Okay. Then we take Linus <laughs> and the tied up guy. And I take them both. Do we just burn the house down? No. Oh. What if he has other stuff? Yeah, other no, stuff? that was silly. It was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's just brainstorming. <laughs> like, it's like, whatever. There's no bad ideas in brainstorming. Just want to make that perfectly clear. Listen, if Bruce is Because your mind is on you. fire doesn't mean that the world <laughs> needs to be. Yeah, like I saw everything and nothing. I saw the beginning and end of time earlier. Like just so now? It just, yeah, it would hurt. My eyes glowed. I don't know if you saw that. No, I did. I was I was dueling. I'm standing there with both bodies on my shoulder being like, are we Are we <laughs> headed out? Yes, we're heading out. Uh, All right. I'm going to check the constable. I want to check the constable for... Gold? For, for like... <laughs> maybe we loot the had, bodies. <laughs> yeah, we got to loot uh, the He bodies. has a, a ring of keys. I take it. And his weapons and armor, but that's it. Mm. Uh, what about the cook? Does he have anything else on him besides? He has, yeah. The the cook has his crossbow, and he has two vials of this dark colored poison. Uh, Rath, you keep hold of that. that. Can I have one of those? Uh, You should take both of them. All right. Just be careful. And including the, is it the same poison that I took from the inn? The bottle yeah. of poison? Yeah, you took the whole bottle, didn't you? Yeah. yeah, it is. The bottle itself contains another four doses of this poison. Wow. So the, each of these vials is one dose. So in total, yeah, I have six, six doses. doses. Yep. I might have a plan. What if we hide the constable's body and I become him? I mean, keep that in your back pocket. Like maybe we hide it in the... I gotta hide it in like another place away from the other pile of bodies. Okay, so the Down blacksmith the well. son, <laughs> the blacksmith sons, another man from town who is actually the one that's unconscious, uh, and s- the other militiamen, and the constable, and the cook. <laughs> <laughs> like when you list them like just that, it just sounds <laughs> really. It, yeah, the blacksmith really, sons really probably daunting. like s- maybe sixteen, seventeen. Oh! <laughs> who did that? <laughs> I think it was Houdini. <laughs> Houdini would never hurt a soul. They fell on magic. And, and like the no. spine is just like totally blown magic. out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. Well, with that grisly scene <laughs> fresh in our minds, <laughs> <laughs> that's where we'll end for tonight. <laughs> Thank you, as usual, to our three psychopaths, <laughs> Jill, Kelly, and Joe for playing. Um, <laughs> And a very special thank you to Kyle for all of his work behind the scenes and getting yeah. that new audio gear up and running. Thank you, Kyle. And a special thank you to our dungeon master, Monty Martin. Yeah. <laughs> Who sets up all the scenes that let us murder people. <laughs> um, a big shout out to Tabletop Audio. Uh for the lovely intro music uh, for our beautiful intro video and also uh, for providing the ambient music. I hope you use it. It's free and it's a great way to elevate your game. Tabletopaudio.com Of course, don't forget to take a look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can check out all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes t-shirts including some of our new ones like Dusk Wardens, um, (laughs) the Clunk Clunk shirt and Way Bigger Than Ducks uh, and of course all your old favorites. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. If you are enjoying the stream and want to help support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can find it by following the links in the description below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. We also have a phenomenal Discord community exclusive for our patrons. So you can join us on Discord and hang out with us and chat about all things Drakenheim, all things D&D, and any other nerdy stuff that you want to talk to us about, including some behind-the-screens information with Monty and a ton of other wonderful channels that you can talk to us about anything. Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything Dungeons and Dragons, including advice for dungeon masters and guides for players. Be sure to join us live next Tuesday when we record the campaign live on Twitch. Check us out from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube. 
Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time in the Shadows of Drakenheim. Thank <laughs> you.